Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a upcoming Arctic blast for parts of the central United States, the eastern United States, and even portions of the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. We're going to be going over how cold those temperatures will be, as well as who could be seeing snowfall within this time period, and we're going to be timing it out uh, over this video. Now, uh, let's get right into it here with your current National Weather Service page. We currently have some high wind watches in effect for parts of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon as well as some high wind warnings in effect for parts of Montana and Wyoming. We also see some wind advisories up for the Dakotas, Montana, uh, and also for parts of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. We also see some freeze warnings in effect for a small portion of western Colorado, as well as some red flag warnings scattered throughout parts of the plains, and we even have some air quality alerts in effect for parts of central California and some heat advisories for parts of southwestern California. California. So let's start off with your current two meter temperature anomaly forecast from the European Ensemble model, a collection of about 51 models. And then we'll look at the GFS Ensemble model and that will really point out the two differences within these two model uh, variations. Now, here is for October 14th, so this Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, and we're looking at most of the cold air centered over the eastern third of the United States, but that's mainly just due to a cold front which is moving by uh, with a upper level low pressure system that will be moving out, and that'll be moving out to the east. We see some cold air temporarily behind this, but this is really not going to be our main push of cold air. What's building up in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, even British Columbia, and Canada, that's going to be our next Arctic air mass. Now we have some ridging which is by this point building over parts of the western and even parts of the central United States but that will eventually break down because we're going to have a very uh, strong upper level low pressure system that will dip down into the United States and bring some very cool temperatures. So let's play this out. Here would be October 15th Thursday and we're looking at cold air uh, moving into portions of the northern uh, the, I would say northern half of the United States, especially as you get west of the Mississippi River, and that's where you're really seeing that cold air move through. We're seeing a big area of very cold air moving from central and northern Canada southward into the northern United States. Now, here would be for October 16th, and we're looking at that cold air moving a little bit further to the east. Now we can see a defined trough shape that looks somewhat like this, uh, so you can start to get uh, an idea of where this trough is setting up you're seeing ridging on either side of this trough so over the west and east coast we do have minor ridging going on throughout these regions but we have a lot of low pressure troughiness over parts of the central united states and that'll be moving out to the east now if you're curious the blues the greens the purples indicating below normal temperatures the uh, yellows the oranges the reds the uh, the browns and even the whites are indicating above normal temperatures so here would be by October 17th, and we're looking at the eastern third or so of the United States getting into some of that cold air. But look at where our cold air is coming from. And you can't see it on this map, but this goes all the way up to the Arctic Circle. We're seeing that cold air funnel uh, from po portions of central Canada to the eastern Two the eastern two-thirds to maybe half of the United States. Now, we're going to start to see this cold air mass start to dip out of the United States and kind of move out to the east, but look what's forming back in Saskatchewan, Alberta, Canada, uh, British Columbia. All of that cold air is going to be kind of reloading over portions of the uh, portion of the United States east of the Rockies. Now, here would be by Sunday morning, October 18th, and look at that. We're seeing this original cold blast moving out, so this would be our first one meanwhile our second air mass uh, our second cold air mass is just reloading over portions of the northern plains and parts of the northern rockies and also for western and central canada by this point much of the eastern two-thirds of the united states is under a very below normal pattern and let's continue uh this forecast here would be by october 19th over portions of the northern plains that cold air lingering and we're seeing that dip further into the united states most of that cold air has dipped out of the United States from that original wave and we're looking at a reinforcement of cold air. Now what you're going to notice is that from 
portions of the east coast and southward to the gulf coast we're not seeing too many uh, areas where you have a, a, a below normal temperatures most of the coastal areas should stay above normal according to what the european ensemble model is showing meanwhile the gfs ensemble model shows the cold air getting all the way to the coast so that's something that's really different within these models and that is going to be a huge factor into how intense and how far east this cold air mass goes now here would be by October 20th, cold air lingering over the central United States. And you're going to see that instead of uh, the bulk of the cold air staying over portions of western Canada, it's now going to shift to parts of the north central United States. So now most of your cold air is just going to sit here over the north central United States, according to the European Ensemble. And then look, we get ridging over portions of the east coast, if this were to be correct. Now let's play this through just a little bit more, and you'll see it really just sits there. Here would be by the 20th first the 22nd the 23rd the 24th the 25th and even the 26th and we have practically the same pattern in place all throughout there east coast stays mild while interior areas gets uh, get quite cold now here is the gfs ensemble model and this is going to be a big difference and it'll be very interesting to see which one actually comes out on top now the gfs ensemble model is going to show a lot more cold air for the coastal regions which the european ensemble model did not show the gfs ensemble model is a collection of about 31 uh, models so here would be by october 15th we're not we're now starting to see that cold air move into the north central united states but look at where the bulk of this cold air is set up in the european ensemble model it was set up right around here meanwhile in the gfs ensemble model and i'll do it in pink it's set up right around here so we do have quite a bit of a difference the gefs is shifted much further to the east than what the European ensemble model is showing and in turn you're going to start to see that the cold air funnels a little bit further to the east unlike what the European ensemble model would show which would be something uh, somewhat like this so we are starting to see some variation already uh, just within the first couple of frames of this model run now here would be by Friday morning, October 16th, we're looking at cold air now infiltrating parts of the eastern United States. But again, look at where the cold air is set up. You even have some warmer temperatures over British Columbia. Meanwhile, as you get just interior of there, we have those very cold temperatures. We're starting to see our first area of very cold air set up over parts of the central United States. And let's uh, move this forward a little bit. Here would be by October 17th. Here would be by the 18th. So we have our first cold air mass uh, which went all the way to the east coast we see this is our first one here's our second one and you can even start to see our third one up in northern Canada so we have three different areas of cold air that are trying to set up we have ridging uh, which is going uh, over portions of the uh, western United States so we have some warmer temperatures for the southwest but for much of the rest of the country we're looking at uh, colder than normal temperatures now let's move this forward here would be up here would be by October 19th and then here would be by October 20th. Now, something that, that I'm noticing, the cold air is getting a little bit further to the coast. Only the areas of the southeast Gulf Coast is really the areas that are seeing that uh, warmer than normal temperatures, but for much of the rest of the eastern two-thirds, you're looking at those cooler than normal temperatures. Here would be by the 21st, and here would be by the 22nd, and we're really starting to see that, except for Florida, we have much cooler than normal temperatures for much of the eastern United States, including the coastal areas. Here be by the 23rd we're now looking at the bulk of this cold air over uh, portions of the northern Great Lakes the interior Northeast but that cold air is dripping all the way for, uh, to the south all the way into parts of Texas Louisiana Mississippi Alabama so it's getting very far to the south even though the bulk of the cold air is very far to the north the cold air can extend all the way uh, in, to the Gulf Coast pretty much now let's play this through here would be by the 24th and the 25th and we're starting to see another area area of cold air move through here's our first area which is still lingering over portions of east the eastern uh, i would say fourth of the united states and also for portions of quebec and eastern canada we're also seeing that second area uh, of uh, cooler temperature so this would be uh, two different distinct areas of cold air we have another one shaping up in northern canada still uh, and those are going to be kind of rotating so this one you're going to see goes to the north this one goes uh, further to the east this one is going to come further to the south so we are going to see pretty much uh, a circle of these cold air masses just rotating and rotating around each other and it's very interesting to look at now 
here would be by uh, the 26th. We're looking at that first air mass all the way up here in northern Quebec by this point. The second air mass is dipped to the south. The third one is still up to the north. So you can really tell how this is moved around and they're all rotating around each other. Now let's start looking at the Climate Prediction Center's forecast. Here's the 8 to 14 day outlook and we're looking at those cooler than normal temperatures for much of the central U.S. Here's the 6 to 10 day outlook and it's much more defined here where we're looking at those uh, temperatures much further below low average for portions especially of the north central united states and finally let's just look quickly at your projected snowfall totals from the uh, gfs ensemble model and the european ensemble model for the gfs ensemble model we're looking at anywhere in that lighter gray that's between a uh, dusting and two inches in the blues two to six inches six to about 10 inches in the purples once you get into the pinks that's where you're getting between 10 and about 20 the lightest pinks between 20 and 30 in the off aqua colors you're looking at 30 to about 40 or so and then once you start getting into those pinks again and the in the darker blues that's where you're getting over about 40 uh, inches or so so once you get above i would say probably that uh, middle shade of gray that's where i would say you have a decent shot of seeing some snowfall on this model so for these regions of the northern great lakes the northern plains the rockies i think you guys have a fairly good shot of seeing some snowfall within this period this is only going through the 28th of October and this is the European ensemble model going through the 22nd of November and uh, for many of these areas these would be a earlier than normal snowfall we're looking at uh, that two inch line getting very far to the south in the interior north northeast we're also looking at the northern Great Lakes much of the plains and throughout much of the mountainous and interior west looking at some of those uh, snowfall totals uh, adding up to maybe two to six inches of snowfall and even higher amounts in those higher elevation regions so that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please leave a like in the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.